What's going on guys, it's Danny from Slow Restoration and of course we're still trying to finish up this Camaro and we're really, as you can see, it's it's coming along really, really nicely. We did uh, last night get the windshield or back glass put in. Um, we got our uh, seal around it, got the glass set, all that looks good and now we're getting ready to tackle the windshield. So kind of the same deal, I'll grab the the welt that you put around it and show you, just real quick show you how that works and then we'll get that windshield laid down in and uh, it'll be one step closer. Here is our window welt kit. It just comes in a roll. Uh, you kind of unravel it and put the seal right around uh, where it goes. I always put it, I guess you could put it on the glass, but I always put it on the car and then set the glass right on top of it. Seems easier. Uh, the windshield's brand new. So there's a little bit of prep, not much because it's new, but we'll, we'll definitely clean the edge good. And we got to get rid of all this tape, of course. So of course, this is part of the stuff we got from Denny's Camaro. He has this stuff in stock all the time. Um, and again, it's just kind of on the roll. And it's just a kind of a layer of a sealer. Just kind of lay it down there, attach it to, like I said, around where the windshield's gonna lay. And then uh, once you have that all laid out, it's gonna be a seam. Um, this stuff's pliable, so you can just kind of knead it together and uh, get rid of that seam. Just kind of knead it so it joins. And then once you push the glass down on, it'll smash that seal all down. And it actually sticks pretty good. So if you didn't know, there is no gasket uh, like a normal older car. Most of them had like a rubber gasket, the glass sat in the channel inside, and then you had to use like a string or something to pop it, the gasket and glass as one into the car. Uh, the Camaros are not like that, they glue in. So we, we started here, we got our welding seal laid down. Um, you, you know, you can put your glass there to see where it goes. I've did enough of these where I kind of know where to put the seal. Um, but you're pretty much safe in the kind of relative middle of the channel here. Uh, so however you want to do it, just uh, if you can, make it as straight and neat as possible. Because once the glass is on there, the trim, the stainless trim that goes around the window will usually cover this pretty good. But you still can see where the seal actually squeezes onto the glass. So if you have it all wavy... It's not going to look that neat. I mean, I know that's kind of a nitpicky thing, but if I walk up to a car to car show or see a car out and the, you can see the ceiling line in the glass and it's just all wavy, you know, they just didn't take their time. Um, and it's hard to get it perfect, but do, do, do the best you can. And, um, you know, I'm all about the details. So we're going to make it as nice as we can. Um, pretty much, I try to keep this layer on uh, so you can push down without your finger sticking into it. But at some point you do have to pull it off. So uh, like I said, you can make it, make sure it's straight and this stuff doesn't really bend or twist. So when you come to these corners and you have to make that, that uh, 90 degree turn or up here, um, you do have to kind of pull this back and rip it off and then you can make that turn. So let me set you down here and I'll continue right on up. All right, we've made our way around to the joining point and uh, we overlap it a tiny bit, kind of pinch this stuff. And then you can just, like I said, take and uh, mold this stuff together. Not, It's not really too difficult to work with. It's just, it's sticky is the worst part, but just kind of mold it together 
and neaten it up so when it's, the glass smashes it down you don't end up with a big blob there or anything that you're going to see. Take your time and then just eye it up. Make sure everything looks nice and uniform and straight. Again, most people throw this stuff on, slap the glass in, they're done. But we're trying to be as nice as we can. Unfortunately, when this car gets painted, the glass will come back out. Um, but until then, we don't know how long that's going to be at this point. So when it leaves here, it needs to look good. Let's go ahead and grab the glass. We have it all prepped, cleaned up. And we'll drop it down in nice and gently. Uh, we're going to make sure the reveal around the edges is all good. And then we do have stops. We picked up some new stops that screw in and they keep this from sliding down, especially on a hot day. That glue can get pretty uh, sticky and the windshield could slip down. Um, so these actually screw on and they're just stops at the bottom of the windshield to keep it from doing that. So let me get you set up. We'll drop this glass in. So once you have it positioned where you're happy with it, um, you don't need the stops in immediately because it's not going to just fall down unless you're doing it in direct 100 degree sunlight. Um, we're just going to actually kind of push gently, well firmly, but gently along the edge. And you probably can't see it on camera, but you can see the seal line and you can also see it bite to the windshield. It changes colors from like an almost clear color to the nice black. You can see where it's biting. And you're gonna have some high and low spots in different areas, and it will make that seal slightly wavy. Like I said, the trim, for the most part, will cover that. You just don't want it to be real sloppy. So let me continue to work on this. All right, so for the most part, that, that uh, windshield's in there. We'll continue to go around and just press on the edge and it works better if you push and kind of hold down for a little bit and not just tap um, seems to work better to push that seal down and get it to mash down where it needs to go fill all the voids and low spots and seal against the body and the windshield so um, again we have these windshield stops and they just kind of go on we'll pick a spot here we'll probably go like right there and over there um, we replaced all this sheet metal so our old holes are not there anymore so we do have to drill new holes um, but these things like i said just kind of lay right there use that slotted hole there so you have some adjustment and we'll pick a spot like in the center of that hole so the next time the windshield gets installed, if something changes, they'll have a little bit of play to go back into. But they just screw down, and like I said, they keep that window from settling down at all. Um, you don't want to end up with a, uh, a visible gap between the glass after your trim is on. And yes, you can, and I'm sure some of the glass guys are going to hate the way I did this. Obviously not a professional glass installer. Um, but you can use a urethane alva tube to put these in. The problem with using urethane is if you don't space that up, it can the glass can sink down too far. And when, when you install your trim, there's actually a gap in between the trim and the glass from the glass side. So this welt does work pretty good, keeps it spaced up. And like I said, this glass is coming back out when the car is painted. With the windshield installed, we are now moving on to, we're, we're really on the quest to get this thing completely finished up. So we need to button up all the small wiring details, uh, just all the small details. So with that being said, we already got a bunch of it done. Um, this is a sender that goes into the water port. There's one here, there's one there. This one's for the Dakota Digital. This one's gonna be for our electric fans to cycle them on and off. We have both of those installed. The Dakota Digital wire for the fans plugged in. Uh, down there is the 
oil pressure sensor port. And again, we're plugged in. We have all that run down, tightened up, uh, ne neatened up a little bit right now. We're not gonna do any final wrap yet until we get the fender on, make sure everything's where we want it. And we might have to run a couple more wires along the way. Um, we also have our cutout wires running up and our speed sensor wire for our Dakota Digital, all three of these. We haven't neatened them up yet because we're not exactly sure how long they need to be down, down there. So we have them uh, run up around and through the hole where the factory uh, speedometer cable would have came through along with these wires. So all of them are now in the cab or in the inside here. So we have some wires kind of all over the place. But uh, again, we're, we're trying to finish all this up and I'm just kind of knocking it out, not showing every step. We just got to get this done at this point. We do have our pigtails on our fans here hanging down. We'll raise that up and get all that neatened up. We have a relay kit to put in for that. And then the sensor wire comes over and hooks again to that sensor. Just got another box in from FedEx. Well, it's not from FedEx, through FedEx. And as you can see, this one's totally blown out again. I got some kind of negative comments with that FedEx video, which it kind of figured, but you know, it is what it is. But I'm just showing you, this is the way, consistently, this is the way we get stuff. Uh, boxes crunched in on this side. Uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know what their deal is. The, <laughs> the guy handed it to me and I was like, oh, looks like he got knocked open there pretty good. And he said, yeah, they were supposed to tape that before they put it on my truck. And you can see the nice tape job. They didn't even come down across the side. So it is what it is, guys. Uh, like I said, understand the pandemic makes things difficult. But when you consistently do stuff like that, you're asking for it.